In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we bring today readings for third Sunday of Easter. And uh, uh, so the prayer, introductory prayer, and also the reading of the gospel. So let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, that very day of the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor <clears throat> to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus of Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word <clears throat> before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all of this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, were, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of the angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with of us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further, but they urged him, stay with us. For it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, hmm, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures for, uh, to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found together, gathered together, the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord So today we are reflecting on the story on the road to Emmaus uh, that is symbolic of not only this disciple's life but also our own life um, and um, just as uh, it's about encounter. Encounter means that uh, getting to know Christ uh, in, uh, and gradually sharing uh, his life. Uh, with him. Uh, so today uh, we, uh, it's uh, another way of saying uh, about this Sunday that is a May Sunday. And it is everyone in our life has the kind of a May day. And I had in mind as well, uh, as, uh, as I looked, I mean, at the many decades in my ministry, uh, it has been a marvelous journey, mm, yet uh, just like two disciples, my journey and your, our journey might also be uh, punctuated by doubts, fears, anxieties, sins and failures. Mm. So we have always, but what, what is interesting in all these things that we tell each other, we have always found God by our side, sometimes as a stranger, as on the road to Emmaus, sometimes as a friend uh, in Scripture, in the Eucharist, and most of all, when life is rough, we have found that Christ is always there. So, three things we have learned uh, over the years. God meets where we are. God, uh, we cannot alienate ourselves from breaking of the bread, which is the Eucharist. And the third thing is that we always accompany others, or we are accompanied with others. So the best part of disciples uh, on the road of Emmaus is that Christ meets them where they are. So where they are? Hmm. They were on the road of Emmaus, moving uh, away from Jerusalem, moving away from the center of the world, the very place that the salvation was just revealed. So this was not their proudest moment. Uh, they were confused, they were confounded, scattered and downcast. And this is exactly the place where Jesus met them. So as I reflect back on uh, these decades uh, uh, of uh, the ministry and my relationship with, with, uh, with uh, each other and with Jesus, God has always met me where I was and God has never refused to meet me um, um, because I was not where God would want me to be. So Christ was always there. And regardless what each one of us feels about the current uh, crisis in the world, how uh, our respective states and countries have uh, or have not responded, one thing is certain, 
we will learn something, some things about our governments, we will learn something about each other and also we'll learn something about ourselves. God has learned uh, some uh, things about us when he gave us free will and he learned that no matter how hard and uh, how much he loves us, we'll continue to make uh, poor choices from time to, uh, to time. He learned that sometimes uh, when we face crisis, when overcome by temptation, we fail. And he learned that we could not save ourselves. And in the end, uh, if left uh, to our own devices, uh, we would only condemn ourselves. So we need a savior. We, the only one that could save us from him, uh, save us was himself. And so he came to us as his son uh, in the form of one of us to live uh, from us and to learn from us and to die, die for us and leave his spirit within us. So we will say that at a certain time we were condemned, we were confined, but now we are free. We are free. We are free with his spirit within us. So this was the only way, the only way uh, that it happened. Uh, and uh, if we do now fast forward to the day, uh, we are condemned. And we know that actually we are confined, uh, confined from the sacraments, confined from the Mass, and we are learning something, some things are, we do, we do learn some things. And for so many of us, uh, that's something uh, of the lives that have never, uh, we have never faced before. And notice that how fortunate we were that several decades before, if we compare with the people or even with centuries in terms of convenience and technology, and especially the way we, of communication. So in a way, we are like the apostles who now are in prison and we uh, read from the Acts of the Apostles how they were released uh, uh, when they were imprisoned. So we are confined uh, for a little while and uh, we will be free. As they were confined and they were free. So why were they were confined? Was God using this time? Uh, this as a time to teach them something? When was this the lesson for us Christian? Many years down in the road are his? Uh, what is uh, he could once again demonstrate his power? Or well, maybe all of them, maybe all of them. But what is important that uh, his son came for a reason. He came from the reason to free us from our prisons that we find ourselves. So we still need to experience this discomfort. We still need to be confined from time to our time so that we appreciate him all the more. So what about our current confinement? Oh, what we are learning in this time about Jesus, about ourselves uh, and also about others. We are following Jesus in this hall, that's the question. Is our faith growing? Are we seeing some things about ourselves and others that we like or maybe we don't like or maybe it's something in between? So the point is during this crisis we should not uh, waste time uh, in this confinement, learn something about uh, ourselves. And I notice uh, that uh, uh, 
when we had conversation and one of priest in uh, in a military priest in one of the installation he said that he he went to the chapel in that chapel he he had the mass but he thought i mean that maybe well he will have the mass in the small chapel but then he said no i will do it in the main chapel so i will remember all these people that actually were coming to the mass each saturday and each sunday so we learn about Christ and we learn about uh, how free this, the, can be our souls from the confines we often find ourselves. And I also observed uh, um, the last Sunday, which was Mercy Sunday, how uh, Pope Francis was saying the Mass in one of the churches. It was the Church of the Holy Spirit and now is, no, is known as uh, um, the um, Divine Mercy Church, and I noticed that how fragile he was. And when we share this reflection, we can understand how much of the Spirit is uh, that invigorates us and bring witness to the world when we are coming together in this celebration. So that's the second point, and uh, just to share shortly, that when the disciples, uh, uh, the disciples did not recognize Jesus until they sat at the table for supper. However, the moment he became real, Jesus vanished from their sight. So over the years, uh, I have not count, uh, 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 lost count. Uh, uh, of the number of times I have celebrated of the Eucharist, oh, that was a big number, but important point is that the story of disciples on the road uh, uh, to Emmaus uh, continues even today. Even today, which is to say Christ is present in ordinary bread and wine, and we cannot simply alienate ourselves from the Eucharist, from our life. This is our life. So the third point, uh, to make it short, uh, this is the ministry of, a, of accompanying others. And that is called spiritual direction, spiritual accompanying. And during the initial years of my priesthood, one of the main motivation was to preach the gospel. But now I notice that it's a company, people on their own journeys. And uh, it's the ministry about uh, uh, being with the most vulnerable people. And also when I am vulnerable, I'm called to listen, to talk, to open the scriptures, and to challenge, to walk with people, and to break bread with them. And that's the part of the healing. So, uh, when we are invited to reflect on our uh, discipleship, we also um, um, uh, 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 come up with the understanding how much of impact, uh, as we were uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, it had on the other's life and also how others make impact of our life. So, uh, <clears throat> it is uh, the, the best way when we notice as we accompany one another is knowing that it is the Lord himself who accompanies us. And this Eucharist that we actually, uh, we, we are in our, is the presence of the Lord as we journey through life and hopefully uh, soon we will be in this together to recognize him in breaking of the bread. So wherever uh, we are today and whoever we are, Christ meets us there. And remember that there's a way of receiving the Eucharist, which is called the spiritual communion, and that spiritual communion comes uh, 
from our desire to receive Lord. So we ask, it's like a mantra, we are uh, in, in contemplative way, we are saying, Lord, come to my heart, come with your gift of grace, come with your grief, uh, with your gift of peace, Lord Jesus, come. And we can still look at this situation and say as we are, Lord Jesus, be with us as you were with your disciples on the way of Emmaus, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.